Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. In this episode, we're going to expand on a subject that was almost touched on during our most recent monthly Inner Circle Masterclass, which is the batch processing of multiple clips. Answering your questions as always are Anders Motz at Tonkraftwerk in Austria. Hello, hello. And over in Tokyo, hey Andy Hagerman, who is Avid's training architect. I am. How you doing? And then myself, Dave, we are hoping that we're helping you understand and get the best out of Pro Tools. Although more Anders and Andy than me. Lol. Oh, right, Anders, uh, batch processing. What are we talking about? Yeah, uh, batch processing is, of course, when you need to perform uh, similar tasks or the same task to a lot of files, maybe to get them ready for export. Maybe you're working in game audio and need to, like export a couple of hundred little dialogue lines or snippets of audio for use in something. Or maybe you're just creating a sample library that you're saving on your hard drive for later use or uh, anything in there between. Uh, there are so many applications for this. And uh, in the last masterclass that we did, we had a great discussion, uh, which uh, Andy then mentioned afterwards. Uh, thank you, Andy, for being there, by the way. You bet. Uh, it's like, we, we could probably do an episode on this because there's so much that we didn't have time for in the masterclass. So uh, this is, of course, for all of the viewers, but especially for those in the masterclass as well. Right. So, so there's two different ways that you can work. Um, you can work in a file-based way using Audio Suite plugins, or, and this is with some fairly recent uh, new features in Pro Tools, there's a way that you can actually work using AAX plugins in a batch processing kind of way. And we're going to start with that kind of newer way this week. And then next week, we'll talk about using Audio Suite, which is a fantastic way to do things that real-time plugins sometimes can't. Um, and, and there's going to be a few things that are common to both those workflows. This is a session, like all of my teaching sessions, is not exciting to look at, but hopefully it'll get the point across. The exciting part is what you bring to the table, Andy. It's not your session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how you pass an AVID exam right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I've got here is I've 10 different tracks. They're all specifically named audio. All the clips are specifically named audio to create a worst case scenario. Don't do this. This is not the way you want to work. <laughs> yeah. Um, one track, I've got a compressor and that's going to be enough for what we're doing right now. And there are a few things that make this workflow work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select some of these clips. Let's say these guys right here. And what I want to do is I want to batch process these clips using that compressor. I'll drag this over here as, ah, that's a pain. It's dragging it to different tracks and I want them all to be on that audio one. So first thing that you wanna do to get this workflow to work nice and smoothly, the best way possible, there's a cute little feature in here. In the clips list, if you click the pop-up menu button, right down here at the bottom, it says timeline drop or something that most people don't even look at. And by default, it's top to bottom. In other words, when you drag multiple clips, they line themselves up on the timeline vertically. So instead, for this kind of work, what I want to do is go left to right. Watch what happens here. I'm going to select, again, a bunch of clips, just a small number, and then I'm going to drag them here. And notice that now they're lining up on a single track. This is useful in a lot of different situations. You might want to temporarily or permanently change the behavior of this drag, but in this particular case, this is gonna help us get that job done. If you drop onto the timeline from left to right using spot mode, does it take the reference of each of the files and drop them at the relevant place? If I go over here, change it over to spot, I'll take a couple of clips that I know aren't next to each other, and I drag them over here, Right now, if I dropped it, it would drop it where I want to have it. Now, what you want to do is you want to recover the original timestamp where it was originally. Is that the correct mm -hmm. understanding? Yes, correct. So what I'll do is I'll pop this up here. So I'll take original timestamp, which is where it was originally recorded on the timeline. I'll pop that. And my guess is, I, I've never done this before. It's a great question. My guess is, is that it will line them all up according to the first selected clip. And that's what it does. Yeah, that's what it does. Okay. I wondered if it would take each individual timestamp and, and place it. In that case, you would have to, to drag them individually and do that, which we do all the time. Mm -hmm. But in, in this case, it does something different. Yeah, it's a right. great question. I didn't know the answer to that. I thought I did. And that's what's happening. So we've got these four clips and I'll drag a couple more on here. So pop this over here. Great. Fantastic. 
Now, there's a new feature in here in the edit menu. You can go to space clips. I'm gonna select all of the clips because it operates on the selected clips. Go to the edit drop-down menu, space clips or option shift H, which is a shortcut that I'm probably not likely to remember. <laughs> It's going to open up this dialog box and you can choose bars and beats, minutes and seconds. You can put any spacing you want between these guys. And I'm going to put two beats between these and boom, you can see that no matter what the spacings were, this is the spacing that you're going to get now. Now each clip is evenly spaced with a two beat gap between each one of those clips. Let's imagine you're using some real time effect that actually has to do something with time, like a reverb or delay or something else, then that spacing actually has effect on the batch processing outcome, right? Absolutely. So we've got these small sine waves, minus 20 dB. I've got a compressor on here and you can see here, it does a little bit of compressing. I've got a ton of makeup gain. So you're gonna see a visual change, but this is batch processing. This is only one thing. Let's really batch process. Um, Dave, give me another effect you want to put on here um channel strip eq fantastic eq everybody loves it channel strip is right there Boink. and we're going to go ahead and do something like this and something like this fantastic this is the curve of greatness right here Just tried and yeah. tested right there um do you want the eq before the compressor or after pre-eq please okay so it's pre-eq right now so we're all set um anders what else do you want let's do some real batch processing what about if you add another compressor okay you can certainly do that. What would you like? Go for, for Pro Compressor. I love that one. Pro Compressor is fantastic. So we've got this batch processing. If you want to change the order of the processing, you can go ahead and drag these any way you want to, no problem. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use a feature that's used for a lot of different things. But in this case, we're going to use it for something that's not traditionally used for. And the feature is commit track. So I'm going to go to track, commit. Or I can use the shortcut, which is option shift C, or you can right click on the track name of one of the tracks that you want to commit and I'll choose commit. No matter what you do, it's going to open up this window. You can do it for selected tracks or the edit selection doesn't matter in this case. So I'll just leave it alone. Dave, do you want to render that volume change that I did? Most definitely. It's super, super important. It's essential. So we're going to keep this checked. You can also render panning if you want to. That doesn't really matter for what we're doing, but you could render that. Send and group assignments, you can commit them or not. Again, for this workflow, it doesn't matter. The one thing that really does matter is because I want to create individual little clips, I'm going to make sure that the consolidate clips checkbox is unchecked. If it's checked, then what will happen is it will create a single whole file clip of that selected area. That's not what I want. What I want are a whole bunch of small clips and whole files. So I'm going to not consolidate the clips. You can choose what you want to do to the track that you currently have. I'm gonna to choose to hide it and make it inactive in case I wanna use it again. And I'm gonna click okay. And there we go. You can see individual clips. You can see the volume has been rendered and you can see that the levels are, are changed because of not one, but two compressors in the chain. Ask me questions, guys. Uh, Andy, before you move on here, I just wanted to mention something. This worked exactly as you wanted, right? But there are some ways where you could go wrong doing this by, for instance, adding a plugin that would add harmonic content. Uh, it's like adding a distortion or something like that, which might create a noise it would render one continuous clip, even though you set it to be separate clips. Reverbs and other things that have some sort of a time component without a persistent noise, those clips then could run into each other, which is not what you want. In that case, you would want to make that space between the clips larger, and you could do that without disrupting your workflow. You just basically go back up here into space clips again, you just change the space. Questions? Oh, so far, uh, really, really good. I really like also that if you look closely on the clips here, you can see that this has been committed. So each clip has now gotten uh, a slight name change with the addition of CM for commit. That's right. Now, the other thing that makes this workflow work, and it's one thing to keep in mind, is that the clips are selected on the timeline and they're selected here in the clips list. And the way that you get that kind of behavior is to go into your preferences window, you go into editing, Clips list selection follows edit selection. That's the one you want to make sure is checked. And I'll show you why in just a second. You could also have your edit selection follow the clip selection, which is fine. It doesn't impact this workflow. 
The reason why you want to make sure these remain selected here is because this name is not going to work for my workflow. I want to rename these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on any one of these selected ones and I'm going to batch rename these guys. And it opens up the batch clip rename dialog box, which is very similar to the batch track rename dialog box. It's almost identical except for a couple of things. And we're going to clear the existing name and we're going to add a prefix. And what's that prefix going to be, Anders? Sign. Fantastic. And do you want a suffix to this? Yeah, I want an underscore. Great. And I want to have some numbering on this as well. I'm going to have my starting number be number one. I'm going to have two different places. It's going to be 01, 02, 03, 04, up to you know, 99. And that's going to make life easier for sorting it in a file manager. And I'm going to separate those with a dash. Fantastic. We've got numbering. We're clearing the existing names and I'm going to click OK. And now you're going to see it's sign underscore, which is the suffix, and then dash 01, 02, 03, 03, all the way up to nine. Exactly what we want. No surprises there. Ask me questions. I have a question. We're batch renaming whole audio clips, correct? We're batch renaming whole file clips, yes. Whole file clips. So does that automatically rename the disk clip? in the audio files folder. I don't think we get an option for that in batch rename, do we? You have the option when you're renaming individual clips, but I was looking for an option on the batch rename thing. I, I didn't see it. To answer your very good question, Dave, let's find out inside the audio files folder and they were not. Okay, batch rename only renames the clips. So at that point, would we need to then export and that would give you the actual clip names? That's exactly right. So the last part of this, and you could do this with whole file clips, you can do this with subset clips, is you can export clips as files. So this is the last part of the workflow. Again, a right click, export clips as files. You're my customer, so Dave, what format do you want? Um, native to the session, I don't want any changes. Okay, so it's going to be uh, my session, I think it's 24 bit, we'll go 24. Um, it's 48K, I know. Uh, do you want to interleave or split mono? Um, split mono, please. Can we back up a second? Sure. That would create two clips. You've got the original clip that you've that you bounced, and then you've got the new one called sine wave. And are, are they the identical clips? So I'm just wondering if it could destructively replace the original files. Generally speaking, you don't want to replace those files. Okay. I mean, Pro Tools does its best not to be destructive. I was just wondering if there was an option in there. I couldn't remember whether the options at the bottom to deal with duplicates would deal with the files or just the file names. This is interesting. So you can choose where things are going to go. In the destination directory, you can choose either the, the directory you were in, which is the audio files folder, or I can choose a different place entirely. If there are duplicate names that are created during the export process, you can basically say replace with new files. You can do auto renaming. You can prompt for a duplicate. I'll go ahead and replace with new files. This is the same format as the session. If I click export, you're going to see now we've got these exported files. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. One thing that happened there, it didn't create a multi-mono. It created a mono version of those clips. It has nothing to do with the path of the track. It's not like bounce. Like if I bounce this track or if I bounce, you know, this output or whatever, it's going to give me a stereo file. These are mono clips, so they're only ever going to be mono. It makes total sense to me. That's a, a, a great workflow where you basically take a lot of, uh, of clips from your timeline or not even in your timeline, in your clips list, spread them onto one tracks, create the, the processing on them and basically write that into new audio clips that you then rename and export in, I mean, when we do it, obviously it takes some time, but if you if you streamline this process, that's something that you do in a couple of seconds. Absolutely. And and, and again, you know, in, in the larger world of production, we use committing tracks for a lot of different things and different options in that window are going to be applicable to different workflows. But for simply rendering down multiple files of multiple selected clips, it's an easy way to get that job done. And it's a way to get that job done that we didn't used to have, right? Before, before track commit, doing something like this was much more difficult, much more time consuming. And this is one way to do batch processing. There's another way using audio suite plugins. And this is a workflow that has been around for a longer time than, than commit tracks um, and has some power that actually real-time plugins don't have. And, and that's something that we're going to talk about in the next episode. Yeah, indeed.
Great stuff, Andy. Really interesting. Uh, really exciting, as always, as well. Really gets the blood pumping. Oh, my pleasure, as always. <laughs> thank you very much okay so if you got a lot out of that video uh hit the like button and if you haven't yet done so uh, please subscribe to our channel and if you hit the bell icon you'll get notified every time we upload our new videos which is, is usually weekly so far we've been pretty consistent for the last two years <laughs> but any anything can happen <laughs> uh, if you head over to protoolsanswers.com you can find out what we're up to over there as well you may even uh, want to join our inner circle and support the channel we're a community funded channel and uh, we have a couple of tiers of support that uh, you guys can get involved in, um, including the one that allows you access to the masterclasses that discuss all of the, in, uh, the, 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 the career defining techniques such as batch clip processing. And we do those once a month uh, with one, two, or maybe even three of us. And you can get involved in our Discord, closed Discord community as, as well. And we appreciate everybody's support who joins that inner circle uh, with us. And um, all he's been to say is thank you very much as ever to Andy. You bet. And thank you to Anders. Thank you, Dave. And thank you to me as and well. thank you, Dave. Thank you to you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Uh, my name's Dave, this is Pro Tools Answers, and we are out.